If you like what you see, why don't you think about subscribing? And make sure to check out my channel for videos just like this. What's going on folks, it's Mr. Bucket List here, and today I bring the complete guide to Quantum of the Seas by Royal Caribbean. Let's check it out. So as usual, I created this video to be the one-stop shop for everything that you need to know about this cruise ship and cruise. So first starting off with a full narrated tour that's going to both be both day and night. After that will be a complete food showcase and that's going to include all the meals in the MDR, a full buffet tour, and then also the specialty dining and things like the Solarium Bistro and some of the other complimentary items as well. After that will be a full review and tour of the North Star, one of the most popular things on this cruise ship. And then after that will be the key, the VIP package that a lot of people have questions about. So I hope this video is extremely helpful. If it is, please, please give me a like, give me a comment. My videos are slipping. I don't know why they just YouTube is shadow banning me, so it's been kind of scary. And not only that, but also check out the full documentary to this review. So it basically is a cruise review, which includes the tours, the shows, everything that I'm showing in here, but in a review format day by day. If you know, if you've seen my channel, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen my channel, it might surprise you. Hope you all enjoyed this video. There are timestamps in the description, and I'll see you soon. All right, so first we have the Royal Theater, which is a main staple on every Royal Caribbean cruise ship. This is usually where you find the Broadway shows, the comedy shows, um, the Love and Marriage shows, things like that. It's basically almost stadium seating. It does have two different levels, and this oxy is really um, advanced as far as the technology in there. It's a really good place to come to to see a good show. Stop by early if you want a good seat. And then after we leave the Royal Theater, usually, and this is no different on this cruise ship as well, usually it's connected or right nearby the casino. And again, it's no different on this cruise ship. Um, this casino is actually called the Casino Royale. Um, like usual, I do not know anything about casinos, so I really can't give you all any tips or can make, make, make comments on the size of it, things like that. Um, in my opinion, which this doesn't really mean, mean much because this is just not my forte, but in my opinion, this is actually a really good sized casino for this cruise ship. Um, and it actually had a lot of different machines. Um, it just had a lot of different areas, things like that. Unlike on Wonder of the Seas, it does not have that smokeless or the smoke-free part of the casino. That's something that the Pioneer knew on that ship. So it doesn't have it here. Um, but I will say when I walked through this cruise ship, I didn't smell any smoke, so I don't know if it was because it was closed or what, but I just, I didn't smell that smoke. And I honestly never really smell it on any Royal Caribbean ship. Um, on Norwegian, for example, I love Norwegian as a cruise line, but I mean, the entire ship smells like smoke because the casino is right in the middle and just seeps throughout the entire ship. But I've never had that issue on Royal Caribbean and this ship is no different. One thing I will say is this casino definitely did get packed during the nighttime. I got lost and I had to get back to my room and so I walked to the casino around the night, nighttime and it was just so many people. I'm like, this is where everybody's at. No one's at the shows, no one's eating. They're all down here gambling. So it was pretty, pretty funny. Now this is one of my favorite areas, even though on this particular cruise I didn't spend much time here. Um, the music hall is a really cool, like almost bar slash club slash just performance venue. It has everything there um, and they usually have like the local bands or the smaller time acts that would come here and perform. Or on my, like on my last cruise, I'm um, on the larger bands, they kind of rotated from the Royal Theater to this area as well. So it's always something going on here or during the day when it's nice and early, you can come here and just chill and hang out. 
it's a really nice area i really liked it and i just like how open it is it's multiple floors you can walk through in and out no problem at all it's never hard to get a seat Now also in the music hall, near the music hall is the Diamond Club. I don't have access because I'm not a Diamond member, so I apologize, I could not get in. Um, from what I've heard, it's just a little area with a couple of seats and like a little bar area and stuff like that, so not, nothing special. Um, another thing about the music hall is because it is double story, it actually does have views of the outside of the ocean in the background. Um, I saw a couple of people who work from home who are here during the day, so again, it's a really nice area to come to during the day if you want to just get away from the crowds and stuff like that. Or during the nighttime if you want to see a small, low-key show. It's a really cool place to come to. Now, if we keep on walking, this is where things kind of just kind of change as far as this style of ship versus an Oasis class. Um, yes, they do almost look similar in a way, but it's just a completely different feel when you're there. This truly felt like a mall to me, and like Oasis class ships, I mean, they're huge, they're open, they're wide, and these are a little bit more tight and compact, so it really felt like I was walking through a shopping mall, which may not be everybody's cup of tea, but for me, I like the change of scenery because I've been on a couple of Oasis class ships, and this is my first time doing a Quantum class ship, so I just like the elegance and the scale of things and just things like that, um, but it was pretty cool. Um, you have a lot of high-end shops. I'm not someone that goes on cruise ships to find good deals and things like that. So I really couldn't care less about the high-end shops. But it was still cool to see um, when you're walking by. Now this Harp and Horn area, this little restaurant slash bar, this place was always packed. Um, I had no idea they had a different menu. I wish I had tried it out. Apparently it's like a small little cover charge, but I did stop by some for some music, um, which was actually pretty cool, but definitely check this place out if you get the chance. All right, so as we keep on scrolling on along here, um, like I did say, it does feel like you're walking through a mall, which isn't a bad thing, it's just a different feel. Um, you definitely do not feel like you're on a cruise ship unless the boat is just rocking, which it didn't actually do during my cruise. Um, one thing I did wanna clarify is a lot of people always ask, how do I get the ship to look so empty? Um, well, the way I do it is I get these videos usually very early in the morning, this is no exception. Um, ironically, because this was a full ship and this was a cruise to Alaska, people are always up at no matter what time it was. Um, so ironically, this video was recorded around 5 a.m. And there was a lot of people just sitting around, hanging out, talking, having a great old time. Um, usually it does not look like this, so it was surprising. But um, that's what time I did this particular video, at least during this time period, was at 5, 5 a.m. in the morning. Now, on my previous couple of cruises, um, this Sorrento's Pizza was one of my favorite places to go, but the quality on this ship just was not the same. I don't really know what was going on with the food on this ship altogether. I'll definitely get into that on my solo re review, my documentary I've got coming out soon. Um, but right now, just as a quick heads up, I did not enjoy the pizza. I think I got it twice, and both times that I couldn't finish it. Um, even the Cafe Promenade, which you all will see in a bit, um, that food as well, it just, it just didn't taste the same. I don't know if I'm just too tired of it or too used to it or what, but um, I just didn't enjoy it like I did on my last couple of cruises. But it was cool that it was there. Now, regardless of the food quality itself, if you're looking for food late at night, these are usually your only couple of options, Cafe Promenade and also Sorrento's Pizza, or you can order um, room service. But of course, room service has a $7.95 fee for every time you order it. So if you don't want to pay any fee, you just want to get some quick food, this is the place to come. Um, heads up at nighttime, these places get packed. You'll see a huge line of people waiting to get food.
And then you also have this place, La Pastry. Um, I didn't try it out because this is not the type of food that I enjoy. Um, this one also does have an upcharge as well. So I'll go ahead and just quickly put the menu there so you all can see it. Um, but this is another option. And then we also have Boleros. This is a, another staple that's on every Royal Caribbean ship I've been on. Um, it's pretty cool. It's just a standard night, nightclub. It's a Latin nightclub. But ironically for this cruise, I don't remember them actually playing any Latin music. Um, it's more just violins and karaoke and things like that. But either way, it was still enjoyable. And then of course you have your guest services area. Um, I did actually come familiar with this unfortunately because I had a lot of issues with my room, my car, things like that. Um, a quick tip, if you need any type of help coming to guest services, um, go early in the morning. They're open 24 seven, so go, go as early as possible. Um, as you all can see in this particular video, nobody was here. Again, this is around five o'clock in the morning. If you go around nine, 10, any time past that, you're gonna wait in line, just being honest with you. So I did want to go ahead and speak about this area right here. This is Wonderland and I did not do it on this cruise, but I did do it on my previous cruise on Wonder of the Seas. I really enjoyed it. The food itself wasn't that good, but as far as the presentation and the experience and things like, like that, I really did like it. Um, I'm actually happy I did it on my previous cruise because as you all can see once I do walk through this one, um, it's not that big of an area. It's like a little small little room versus the one on Wonder of the Seas. It's like a double story area, nice views. Um, it was just a lot on more of a grander style. So I can only imagine if the, if the, the area itself was so small, how the food presentation things could have been. Um, I just, I didn't enjoy the food presentation on this cruise. So who knows how it would have been in here with Wonderland. So again, it's a really cool area, really cool experience. But if you do do Wonderland, I do recommend you do it on a newer ship because it may not be the same quality or experience if you do it on a ship like this. Now, as far as this Schooner bar, this place was always packed. No matter what time of the day it was, outside of early in the morning, like right now, um, they always had something going on, people just hanging out. Um, this was a really fun area to go to. I didn't enjoy it as much as I could have because I could never get a seat. Um, but they had little games, like they would like guess the name of the song, they would play like maybe five seconds of it and you had to shout the name out. They had bingo, um, they had a guy just playing guitar, piano, things like that. I'm um, just a lot of little games and entertainment and stuff like that and I always had a lively crowd so if you're someone that wants to be around a lot of just show social activities but not necessarily in the theater or the stage, or the stage shows come here it's a really good fun place to be And then of course you have your focus photo galleries. So, I mean, they do actually have like areas where you can take pictures in front of like, I don't know, like the staircase and maybe like a little mural or something like that. They have all these different spots around the ship. 
And then they actually did a photo um, session on the helipad, like around mountains and things like that. I'm sure it was beautiful. I didn't sign up for it because pictures on cruise ships are extremely expensive. And I'm solo traveling. I can get pictures on my own. I don't need that type of stuff. But um, they are pretty nice. So not to discourage anybody that does that. This is where you come and take a look at your pictures and see how they look and things like that. So I just had to point this area out again. This is around 5.30 in the morning and you have the coffee zombies lining up to get some coffee. Um, now I've never had coffee in my life, period. I don't want it. Everything I do is off of adrenaline. If I don't have the energy, I'm just not gonna do it. So it's just funny to see, but yes, this is why I was so crowded because people were up early getting coffee. And then of course you have your bionic bar. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this actually pioneered on this ship. Um, this was the first of the, of the quantum class ships, Quantum of the Seas, and this is one of their staples, just their technology, the bionic bar. Um, I've seen this on every other cruise ship I've been on with Royal Caribbean besides Mariner, so um, nothing really new to me, but either way, it's still cool to see. Now, while we walk through this area, I just want to say I truly enjoy how elegant this ship looks as you walk and just look around. I mean, everything is just futuristic, but clean looking and just elegant looking. Um, if I were to compare this ship, it reminds me of the MSC Miravelia. Um, that's the first and only MSC ship I've been on. And even though a lot of people like to hate and just don't like that line in general, to me, I think that's still one of the most just that's just one of the most grandest looking, just cleanest looking ships I've ever been on. And this was like a cross between that and Symphony of the Seas. Um, I really thoroughly enjoyed this cruise ship just walking through it. Of course, when it was busy, it had a whole different feel to it. But it was, when it wasn't busy, when it was slow like this early in the morning, it's a beautiful ship to walk through. Um, just perfect. Around this area is Jamie's Italian. This was my first time actually going there, and this is honestly one of my first times really paying separate for our specialty dining. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I loved it so much. I actually wanted to go back a second time, but they were so booked up, which I understand why. Um, the food was really good. I definitely can't wait to show you all in my full documentary, my solo documentary of this cruise ship. Um, but definitely, if you get the chance, at least come here for lunch, because it's about half off, $25. Um, either way, it's almost an identical menu. It's really good. Check it out. And then like usual, um, it does have an art gallery and like usual, I saw people just buying those pictures up and left and right. It was crazy looking at those prices. Um, but I do like the area of this one. Um, usually they have like in a little hallway near the casino, but this one actually has its own little area off to the side. And it's like in a really good view. So you don't have to kind of like, you don't have to search for it. It's right there, which I really appreciate it. Um, also around this area was the Cafe 270. Um, 270 was one of my favorite areas on the ship because of the shows, the views, and then this cafe. Um, this cafe was actually really good. Um, it reminded me of a mixture of the Cafe Promenade and a mixture of the Solario Bistro. Um, it wasn't open as much as I would like, but it did have breakfast, snacks, and almost stuff right before dinner. Um, and it was just really good. The service was really nice and really speedy. Um, they had things like paninis and wraps and just salads. Just healthy stuff, um, stuff that will kind of get you, get you going before your main courses. So I really enjoyed it. And like I said, I really liked the location as well. And then as far as this 270, so the name comes from the 270 degree view that you have from the back windows. Um, again, I really enjoyed this area. Just, it was huge. It had some really good shows, um, great seating during the day and during the nighttime. Everything about this, I really liked it. 
it doesn't make up for the Aqua Theater to me on the Oasis class ships, but if there was a close second, this is definitely it right here. And another thing about this area is it was just so cool. I mean, during the day, they would actually have like people practicing for different shows on different different cruise ships. So they weren't necessarily performers on our cruise ships, but they were practicing, I guess, on the off seasons for their cruises. So you had people just kind of watching, including myself, just watching them practice. And they had the music going and stuff like that. But they were in like, like sweatsuits and sweatpants, things like that. Like they were just in like their regular clothes while they were practicing so i really enjoyed that we didn't get charged extra to see them or anything like that you didn't have to reserve your seat you just kind of walk and just kind of wa watch them so i really enjoyed that aspect of it on um, this area itself it just felt like it was always welcome and open for any time you want to come through so i just i really enjoyed this club 270 and then of course at nighttime as well nighttime was amazing they had some amazing parties and shows and everything like that and then including in this area is also things like a library, a game room, um, card room, things like that. So it was really cool. I had no idea this was here until I was just kind of, of course, doing this tour, just trying to figure out everything on this cruise ship. And I happened to stumble upon this area. And what was also cool seeing a lot of people that work from home that were in this area as well, just kind of doing their thing with their little head tests and stuff like that. So pretty, pretty cool. And then as far as the dining room, so usually I can go and get an easy, nice shot of everything and it's multiple levels and it's nice and empty and things like that. But they just were not having it on this cruise ship because it was 100% capacity. And so um, I tried to get my best, but I just couldn't get as much as I wanted to. And not to mention the setup wasn't the same as the usual dining rooms. I'm usually it's a nice wide open area and you can, you can look down and see the different floors. That's, how not, that's not how this one worked. It was different floors, but they were kind of closed off and they were like split half and half. It was just different. Um, so this is the, the footage I have from that, but like this is the best I can do. Um, again, I'll go more to that in my review that's coming up later on. So I always miss out on the conference centers on these cruise ships, I just usually forget about them, but this time I finally made it to one. And of course it's just a standard room, but it was cool to finally see how it looks, a little microphone and everything like that. If you want to hold a conference, it's fairly easy to do on a cruise ship, just let them know and they can set something up for you. All right, folks, it's Mr. Bucklist here. Thank you for joining me for another one of these walkthroughs. This time it's on Quantum of the Seas. This is an interior with a virtual balcony. That window over there is not working right now, but eventually I'll get it in there. But either way, let's get to it. So as usual, the first thing I want to go ahead and stop by is the bathroom. I'm not right for you all. This is the first time I'm doing any of this. So honestly, this is going to be new to me like it's new to you all. But this is the bathroom. A decent sized bathroom again, like usual, by myself. I'm not bad at all. Plenty of space down there. It's got the little drain plugs. So if water were to get on the floor, it can just drain straight out. So pretty good. It's got the different areas as well not bad uh, for two people this may be a little bit tight but for myself not bad at all and the doors don't slam like one of the seas so that's definitely a plus um, second is we have both the his and her closet or 
mates class, whatever you all want to call it. Um, this is the class that you have. Um, this one's actually different than one of the C's. So this is more like coats and then that one has shelf space. Um, either way, it's cool. More than enough for what I need for my purposes. And then you also have this nice little couch and stuff. Um, I'm kind of noticing the theme. Just looking around, everything that's in this ship, it's not a bad thing, but it is a little bit smaller than what I've seen on other ships. So just kind of something to think about. Um, again, get the other side of the closet. This one's for like shoes and clothes and things like that. You got your little safe. Um, my bags haven't really come yet, so I don't really have much to put in there, but that's what's going on. Next thing, if we keep on scrolling is, like usual, you have all your um, drawer space and things like that. So it's a good amount. Everything's nice and clean. If I'm not mistaken, this ship was built in 2014, maybe 2015. I'll put a title card in there so you all can see. Um, but it's still in really nice condition. It does have a micro fridge, fridge, so if you're curious about that, it's definitely got one. And then you also have this desk. And so I don't have my second laptop, I just have my one right here. But just like on my other ship, if you have two different laptops, you got more than enough space for both of them. Not bad at all. Now one thing I did not show, let me get off the camera for what's going on. All right. And then the last thing, of course, is the bed. So what they usually do, if it's just you, they'll put both the beds together and make it into a king-size bed. So that's what I have here. It actually looks really comfortable, so I'm really excited. And the cool thing is, it's directly in front of the TV. Um, I believe you can swivel around. Actually, you can't, so the TV is going to be stuck in this position, but either way, you're right in front of it, so not bad. Um, now, one disappointing thing is they don't have as many outlets as the other ships. The other ships had um, outlets right here and then on the other side as well, and they had USBs and all that stuff. This one doesn't. Um, so what I'll go ahead and do is at the end of this video, I'll go ahead and just do a run through the outlets. Um, but just know it's not one on this side, it's only one on the other side over there. Uh, but you have your phone, things like that. And then, now this is something new. So they have trunk space, that's dope. Um, so if you wanna put stuff above your head, that's up there as well. That's actually pretty cool, I like that. Now what I don't like is right now my TV is not working, so I don't know if it's because the ship hasn't started moving or what, um, but let me show you all how it's supposed to work. So you have this little remote right here. Um, I, it took me a while to find it, but I had to look it up on YouTube. But you have a little remote, you press the little button to turn it on, and then when you turn it on, you see it powers on, and you're supposed to get a view of the outside. For whatever reason, it's not working. We haven't left yet, so that may be what it is, but just a heads up. And the last thing is just kind of going over here. So this is where your outlet's at. So basically if you're by yourself or whoever, whoever's here, you're just gonna have this one outlet on the side. So just kind of keep that in mind. So this is about as empty as it's going to get. 6.30 in the morning on the last day. Of course, everybody's all worn out, so this is it.
Alrighty, so now we're heading to the Solarium Bistro, which is one of my favorite places on any Royal Caribbean cruise ship, at least the ones that have them. And the reason why I like them is it's easy in, easy out. It's not a long wait to get in. Um, you can get your food. You can have a quick meal in no, no more than 10 to 15 minutes if you go here. It's really easy to get your food. And it's open from breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can take a to-go box with you, a to-go plate with you. Um, and then the food options they actually have are actually really good. Um, it's always really fresh. The one thing is, it's not a full buffet like um, the, the actual Windjammer. It does have, it's just, it has options, but it's not a huge buffet. Uh, but either way, it's more than enough for me. It'd probably be more, more than enough for you. Um, it's a really good option to come to. Alrighty, so as far as the pool deck goes, um, again, this is a cruise to Alaska, so the weather wasn't ideal to actually swim. Um, most people that did use the pool deck, they did actually go into the um, jacuzzis and things like that, the hot tubs. Um, ironically, I actually got into the pool deck on the very first day um, in Seattle. The weather was still pretty cold for my liking. It was about maybe 55, 60 degrees. I'm not really sure. Um, but the water was heated, so I went ahead and got in the pool on the very first day. Um, I was the only person in there, then a, a, a young man and his, his his daughter or something like that, they jumped in as well, but it was nice. Um, that was the last time I got into that main pool was the first day. After that, I got into the hot tubs like everybody else. Um, it's a really nice pool. It has a really nice large screen as well. Um, it was just, just a really nice setup. Um, now, ironically, even though I did record this early in the morning, I rarely saw anybody on this pool deck ever like the only people again like, like i saw was people in the hot tubs but people on the actual pool deck sitting out watching things like that i never saw it outside of the one time when we were on the actual um when we were in the inside passage going to the glaciers that's when i saw people on the pool deck but outside of that it was empty the entire cruise and then of course there's some other things on the pool deck itself it's going to have a couple of different bars that were always open so i did see people getting drinks from the bars I mean, you have the North Star, which I'll show you all in a little bit, which is really cool. Um, it takes you over and above the cruise ship, the mountain, things like that. Just depending on where you're at, it's going to extend its arm over different areas. So that was a really great experience. A tip about that is you want to try to go ahead and book that as soon as you go on the cruise ship when it's complimentary and it's free. If you want to do it while you're in port or on a sea day, it's going to, it's going to cost additional money. Um, it's like $19 unless you're doing it in the glaciers, then it's $69. Um, but either way... It's definitely worth it to at least try it once. I strongly suggest trying to get it complimentary to see if you like it and then come back later on if you want to pay for it. Y'all, we are heading into the North Star. Yeah, extended view. So excited! Hello, deck 14 or above there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would take it. <laughs> I don't think I'd survive it. I'd be a little And then the pool also does have an indoor pool as well. Um, this actually had, of course, more activity than the outdoor pool. Um, so if you want to get a good seat or at least get in the pool, come here early. And then around here, you also have both your towel station and then also um, your life jacket station. So, I mean, you definitely want to come here. If you have your towels, please do not forget that they do close on the last day. 
around 10 to 11 o'clock. So if you don't turn it in before the last day, you have to wait in some separate line when you're getting off the ship and they're potentially going to charge you. It just becomes a big mess. So if you rent some towels out, make sure you turn it back in before it's too late. Now this little area I was actually pretty excited about because they didn't have this on the other cruise ship I've been on and the food menu does rotate, which I did not know. Um, but it's like, almost like a quick service little um, Chinese little restaurant. And the food was actually really good. Um, I just got a random, just a bunch of stuff um, as you all can see. Um, but I did enjoy it. I went back and got seconds as well. And it was just a nice little place. It was just a different change of pace when it came to the food that was offered on the ship. All right, and then right here we have the living room, which is for um, just teens and things like that to do like stuff like activities and hang out and stuff like that. Obviously, I don't have any kids. I'm not a teen myself, so I didn't go in. So I apologize. I can't show that area. It wasn't even open when I tried to go in there. Um, and then we're going to head on to the Windjammer Buffet. So, of course, this is the main buffet on every single Royal Caribbean ship. This is no different. Um, this one I did enjoy, but my lord, it was always busy. Um, I was so happy to get this footage because I don't know if we were in port or what. I really can't remember, but it was empty. So I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead. This is the chance. Um, but other than that, usually this place is bumper to bumper traffic. People bumping into each other and just so hard to get a seat. And people hauled the seats beside the window. Um, there was one time I came here during breakfast where there was so few seats that I literally almost had to sit outside. I sat right beside the window in the very back and there was a guy sitting outside because there was just no more seats left and sitting outside on the alaska cruise on on the sea day when the ship is just flying by and all that wind i felt so bad for that guy um, but that's how crowded this ship was um this is not one of the largest wind jammers this is a quantum class ship so the one oasis class is a little bit larger but just keep that in mind that this wind jammer does get packed on this ship Now, one place that wasn't packed, surprisingly, was the fitness center. Um, and, and it never usually is. It actually was a hard time finding this. Um, I had no idea. It was like the very end of the ship at the top. Um, but this is actually really good. It was a really good size for the size of the ship. Like usual, they always have great views. This one's no, no different. Um, and this one also had just a lot of different machines, a lot of free weights, a lot of treadmills, bikes. It was packed for the area and the amount of space that they had to use for this area, this, this fitness center. It was so many different machines, I was thoroughly surprised. And then they had like a little conference room and a ballet room and a fitness room. It had all these different sections as well. So again, really good job with the Fitness Center Royal Caribbean.
right y'all so i am on one of the trails that they have um this sucks this really sucks i thought this was a door somewhere to get inside but apparently not it's so cold up here it's raining wet this is torture And then like usual, they also had a running track and a rock climbing wall. I did not do the rock climbing wall because it was cold and it was closed and I just didn't feel like doing it. Um, but it did open eventually on my cruise. Now something that was new to me, at least on this cruise ship, was iFly. Um, now I have done iFly before on land here in Tampa, Florida. And so I definitely wanted to go ahead and do it here on the cruise ship. Now, just like with um, the North Star, you can actually do this for free as well, but you have to sign up as soon as you get on the ship. It's complimentary. On a sea day, they do charge, but on a sea day, you actually get a longer time to do it. So I say, you know what? It's $29. I'll go ahead and do it. And so I did, and it was actually a really good time. And then, of course, they also have the um, Flow Rider, which I did not do this cruise because it was too cold. It was barely open. I just did not feel like getting in that cold water. Um, but again, that's an option as well. That one they do not charge for. Now before we head into the Seaplex, they do also have an arcade, which is no stranger to a World Caribbean cruise ship. Um, the way it works is you have to actually buy credits and you have to scan your little card and things like that. You can't just use tokens or dollars or anything like that. You have to buy credits first and then actually use the credits or whatever on the arcades themselves. Stuff. Um, but the Seaplex, the Seaplex was amazing. Now, as far as the C-Plex, this actually really surprised me. Um, so this is a nice, huge, enclosed area that had both games, bumper cars, um, dancing classes, all type of stuff. I mean, just, and it had multiple levels. Like, it was a really good time, and it was so versatile. Um, for example, when I first got here, as you all can see, there's bumper cars all over the place. But when I first got here, it was a bumper car ring, and then so I went and did that. And then a couple hours later, it turned into a skating ring. And then a couple hours later, it turned into a dance-off ring and just laser tag. It's so much different things that's in the C-Plex. This is one of my favorite places. Even though it wasn't always busy, which was amazing, um, just coming here and seeing the different setups was just really cool. Not to mention it had the doghouse, which is one of my favorite places to eat for a quick snack there as well. Um, now, if you buy the soda package, you need a place to refill your soda cup. This is also where you want to come to. It's in the C-Plex.
Now, another quick thing about the C-Plex is they do have this Xbox area. So I am an Xbox gamer, even though I own all of the generations of almost every game system out there, PS, PS4, PS5, Switch, Xbox One X. I have them all, um, but I am an Xbox gamer because of Game Pass, and so it was cool to see this. Now, the funny thing is they actually have old Xboxes, and so they have Xbox Ones, like the old black ones, and then they have the One Ss, but either way, it's still cool to see this on a cruise ship. Alrighty, so I'm gonna leave you all to it. I hope you all enjoyed the rest of this video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, maybe you donate to the channel. I am doing this while I am sick, as you all can probably tell in my voice. But if you can, like I said, support the channel in any way possible, if you're able to. If not, either way, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you soon. It's your boy, Mr. Bucklist. Peace out. Alright, so let's keep on strolling.
even though this is not a review of this um, food, I did do an honest review of the cruise in general, so definitely check that out if you haven't. I will say I was not a fan of a lot of the buffet food on this cruise. It just, as you all can see from the pictures and the videos, it just, it was just bad. I mean, I'm just being honest with you all. Um, the main dining room food was okay at best. The solarium was decent. Um, Jamie's Italian was great, but as far as that buffet was just really sloppy, bad presentation, warm, barely even warm to cold, it wasn't even hot, it just, I was not feeling it whatsoever, so again, keep that in mind if you go on this cruise ship. Hope you all are enjoying this video. Uh, as I said earlier, now it's gonna be the full tour of both the buffet and the um, main dining room and the solarium. Uh, again, YouTube has cut down my viewership by about 70 to 80%. So I mean, it affects everything on my channel from subs to monetization, things like that. So you all support, like I said, it's truly necessary for me to continue on. Whether it's a like, a comment, donation, whatever you all feel like you wanna do, I'm all for it. I just wanna keep my channel going. So again, I hope you all enjoy the rest of this video. I'll see you soon. Pain Canelada. That looks good. But I also got even more fruits. Falafel. Two calamari. Good, that's really good. All right, so welcome to the Windjammer here. On Quantum of the Seas. I thought this video would be impossible because it's always so busy. 
As of right now, it looks okay. And then over here, we have Bakery. Now obviously this ship is a lot smaller than an Oasis class ship, so there's not much to it, but it's still there. Now if I'm not mistaken, tonight is um You also got your little coffee area. And then right here, we have fruits. If I'm not mistaken, I believe tonight is Italian night, um, but I haven't really seen much. Just speak Italian to me, so it's just like regular stuff. And then you got the international side. Nachos, gravy, pork and mushroom, I don't know what that is. Regulars. We have a meat carving station. Right, and here we have desserts. This is actually the most fun. I looked around and everything else is a little That is, and they're not trying it. Okay. Real chicken parmesan, okay.
what is the North Star and what ships can you find it on? Long story short, the North Star is a capsule. It holds about six to eight people, just depending on how many people sign up and the size of the people on the actual in the group itself. And what it is, it, it goes high up to the sky. So it actually holds the world record for the highest deck on a cruise ship. It takes you more than 300 feet in the air. It's technically a ride. And so um, it's just a good viewing, it's a good way to view the ship and view the sea and the surrounding things like that. It's just basically a ride that goes up, goes around, and goes down. Think of it as a moving observation deck. Now, as far as what ships it's on, well, of course, it's only on Royal Caribbean at this time period, and it's on the um, Quantum Plus and Quantum Class ships. So that includes Quantum of the Seas, Anthem, Ovation, Spectrum, and Odyssey. Now, before we get to my tips, let's first talk about the regulations. So to get on this attraction, you do have to be at least 42 inches tall. If you want to ride alone, you have to be at least 48 inches tall. And then there is a weight limit of 300 pounds. Now, when it comes to the booking aspect, this may change depending on the ship, where you're at, things like that. I'll tell you right now, on Quantum, I couldn't book it until I got on the ship, but on Odyssey, I was able to pre-book it before we actually got on board. I was able to do it a couple weeks in, in advance, and so it really just depends. Um, but either way, I do recommend once you get on the cruise ship, if you haven't already booked it, make sure that's the first thing you do. And there's two reasons for that. One, if you don't book it in time, it does get basically sold out or booked up. So you won't be able to book it for the entire cruise unless somebody drops their reservation, which is kind of hard to find out. The second thing is they do have free sessions. And so basically, if you were able to catch it on a port day, so for example, this video that you're seeing right now, we were in Seattle, we had just finished boarding and they had an open reservation. And so being that I booked it as soon as I got on board, I was able to try it as soon as I got on board for free. Now the difference is when you do a free version versus the paid version, the free version only goes up and down. It doesn't go to the side, to the side, so you're not leaning over the ship and back and forth. It just literally goes up, you stand, sit there for a little bit, and then it goes right back down. So it's about maybe a three to five minute process at the most. I think it's more on the three minute side. Um, but that's for the free version. Now for the paid version, again, this is going to be something that just varies. When I was in Alaska at the time, I think the paid version was $29 um, for sea days and then if you were like going in the, over the glaciers or whatever it was like $39 now I'm hearing reports that it's close to $50 um, for um, sea days and just again it just depends on the cruise ship on Odyssey I can't remember I just remember we did it at nighttime as you're seeing in this video but I think it still at that time was about $30 well actually no this was free because it was on a port day um, so it was free and I was able to get a good booking so Again, the main thing is you want to at least get that free session in as soon as you get on the cruise ship. When you book, well, book it as soon as you get on the cruise ship. Um, usually, it just depends on your itinerary. But of course, the first day since you're in port, that's going to be free. And then whatever port days they have as well are usually going to be the free or cheaper. Um, but that is my recommendation as far as for the North Star. So to just to wrap this video up, I just want to say the North Star is fun. I highly recommend you at least do the free session if you're on one of these type of cruise ships that has it available, just to see if you like it. And then of course, depending on which port you go to, like for us in Alaska, going over mountains and things like that, glaciers and stuff, it really just depends on your itinerary and your port. I mean, if you're just on a sea day and you're just going over water, it's not <laughs> really special. Um, but again, if you're near mountains or volcanoes or whatever, wherever you're at on your cruise ship, and you want to see some good scenery. I mean, you really can't beat it. Plus, the views of the cruise ship. I mean, obviously, I mean, just look how beautiful Odyssey looks right now. I mean, there's so many good views you can get from the cruise ship if you do the North Star. So I hope. Showing the key program and my honest review and how I felt about it. Let's check it out. Now before we get started, there are a couple things I do want to go ahead and break down about this video. Uh, number one, the reason why I call this an honest review because I am not sponsored by anybody. Everything I do is on for my own wallet. So again, like I said, it's no type of biases or anything like that. I try to keep it real with you all. Number two is this program has changed rapidly. And I mean, over the past year, over the past couple of months, over the past couple of weeks, it's always changing. So there may be some things that's offered in this video that may not be there on your cruise, or there may be some added things on there that I didn't mention that just recently got added on. So again, like I said, just kind of know that before you go into this video and before you even try to buy the key, it may change on you. 
And lastly, I do keep all of my documents from all my cruises. So all the cruise planners, the key documents that literally gives you a full list of everything. I would put pictures in this video, but they're so, it's just, YouTube has a really bad compression quality, so there's no point in doing that. I'm gonna attempt to try to add some links so you all can just download documents if you want to. Um, but just again, like I said, know that if you do do this program, it's gonna be on there. They're gonna give you little sheets when you first walk to your room. Now the first thing I want to mention is exactly what is the key. Um, so it's almost like a paid for VIP service. You're getting early access to shows. Um, you're you're having the fastest internet at sea. Um, also the streaming package. You're getting priority embarkation, debarkation, all this stuff that's listed right here. Um, that's what's currently offered in the key program right now. Um, like I said, this is a limited offer. So basically I think they only allow a certain amount of people to receive the key. And then after that, if you try to book it, it's just not going to show up or it's going to say sold out. So it's honestly the way i look at it is it's the best way to get the same type of perks that people that are like pinnacle and diamond plus people that sail a lot with the royal caribbean they spend a lot of money because they have a lot of days on at sea with the royal caribbean it's like the fast track to get into that program you just have to pay on it by a cruise to cruise basis so for me i really like it but a lot of people that are in those tiers they get kind of annoyed at least online they get annoyed about it when you meet them in person they don't really care but online it seems like everybody has a chip on their shoulder for people that actually can purchase the key so again i really like it but i want to give you all the reasons why I really like it coming up. Starting off with the priority embark and disembark. Um, so you'll notice the key benefits right away as soon as your cruise starts at the terminal. Um, for example, on my most recent cruise, um, the general guests had a line of about three to 400 people that were just kind of stationary, just waiting to actually get let in. Versus the key, when I got there, we had about four or five people in front of me um, and we never stopped. We just kept on walking to get straight in. So like I said, that's one of the biggest benefits. You're going to be one of the first people on the ship. And like I said in my solo documentary, I was the first person on the actual pool deck. So it was really cool, especially for a ship like the size of the Symphony of the Seas. And then that also translates to getting back onto the ship when you're at port. So for example, when I was in St. Thomas, it started to rain. And so to get back on the ship, a lot of people were trying to hurry up and get back on because they didn't want to get wet. But when you got to the gangway, there was two different lines. There was one for key guests and priority guests. And then there was another line for everyone else. And so unfortunately, because there were so many people rushing to get back onto the ship, a lot of people were stuck in the rain, kind of go through security work versus us. We just literally just walked straight through. And we also had our own elevators, which is always a big plus on any cruise ship. Now, this is one of my favorites. I'm going to keep it brief, um, but it's pretty straightforward. You're going to get private hours to activities. So in my case, in my cruise, it was the ice skating ring. It was the um, flow rider. It was um, the rock climbing wall, the zip lining, a couple of slides, almost all the activities, outdoor and indoor, you're going to have your private times. Now, the private times are usually pretty early in the morning, like seven or eight o'clock in the morning. So that's one thing to think about. But either way, not having to line up and not having to just be around a bunch of people and getting limited time. Like literally you can pay for private hours on the flow rider. I think it's like $90 or $180, just depending on how much time you get. Or if you get the key, it's like you can get the same experience for a lot less. So I really enjoyed it because I'm someone that loves to do like thrill seeking type stuff. And this was really a huge plus for me and it worked out perfectly. Now this is a change that's deemed controversial, at least like on social media and different groups I was looking on, but I mean, what's not controversial on, on the internet? Um, but anyway, so as far as the shows, so what we end up getting now is actual early access to all the stage shows instead of reserved seating. Um, the funny thing that just, I don't understand why people are not liking the change is because when you think about it, if you get early access, you can literally pick any seat you want instead of just being relegated to one particular set of seats. Um, now, what I did to make sure I always had the best seat was there are still reserved seats, but it's for the star class. And if you know anything about Royal Caribbean, the star class is a lot of money to get those seats. And so, I mean, it's just you're definitely going to get the best seats in the house if you pay for that type of service. And so what I did was I literally sat right beside the star class and every one of the shows. So, for example, on the show Flight. They were like way in the back. I'm like, why would they be way in the back for the star class? And I thought about it, I was like, man, if they're in the back, that means something's up. And so sure enough, when I sat in that show, when the, the plane started to fly around the whole auditorium, if you were sitting in front row, you would have to turn around and nearly just snap your neck to try to see everything. But where we sat at in the star class, well, beside the star class, you could see everything. And it was just, I would say, thank goodness. So with the key, that makes it a lot easier than having your own reserved seating because most likely if they did it that way, you wouldn't be necessarily beside those people. You would just basically be wherever they tell you to sit. 
So it's really cool. As you all see in the videos, I was able to kind of have the whole theater to myself multiple times. And when I did want to sit in the front row, I sat in the front row. So really a good plus. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is go over the food in both the room service and also the key premium breakfast. Um, now, this is this is something that has, again, was controversial because they included this complimentary room service when they took out the previous um, welcome lunch that was at Chops Grill or had the Chops Grill menu. So a lot of people were upset about this, but I actually like this change and apparently this is not going away anyway and they have brought back the Chops Grill. So like I said, a lot of things have recently changed. Just keep that in mind when you're watching this video if you think I left something out. Um, now, as far as the room service, so what it basically means is any type of room service that you get, usually they don't charge you by item, but they charge you by delivery fee. So you have a $7.95 delivery fee each time you call it, including for the hot breakfast. And so for me, I really enjoy this because basically if I didn't want to get stuck going to the buffet, if I didn't want to wake up early to go to breakfast, it didn't matter because I had this this complimentary room service and it just, I mean the food, the, the quality of the food that was actually included, I actually really enjoy, including the wings. I love hot wings and so the wings were really good. And then the breakfast was really good as well. So again, like I said, you're waving a $7.95, $7.95 fee every time you're using this. And I mean, I use this multiple times in one day. So again, it, it really worked out. And then as far as the actual breakfast, so it's a little breakfast that you have at the end of the um, cruise where it's the key members and Pinnacle Plus and Star. All the priority guests have this really nice breakfast. And if you all can see the food in this video, the food was really high quality. It was really good. Um, this is my first time having Eggs Benedict and it actually had included crab meat and this and that. And I just, I thought I was going to hate it, but it was actually really, really good. So something I would never try if it wasn't for the keys. So once again, all included, not to mention you can go to this breakfast, they'll come and grab your bags for you, and then you can literally just walk straight off the ship anytime you want. And as, as soon as you get off the ship, your bags are gonna be sitting there in a special little key area, or like me, I just decided to take my bags with me and they just kind of kept in the dining room while I was eating. So they give you so many flexibility options when you do the key, it's definitely working. Now there are a couple more things that the key does offer. Um, for example, if you buy any type of specialty dining or any type of just additional dining, they're gonna give you a 25% 25, 25 discount off your purchases. And then of course, the main reason why I bought the key, and this is gonna come into my summary and why I think it was amazing value, at least for myself, is it includes um, the internet. So like I said, it's the fastest internet at sea. It does include streaming. I didn't think I was gonna use the streaming until I actually did and I actually really enjoyed it because it was really good quality. Um, and that, again, is the main reason why I bought it. So, for example, I have to buy internet packages when I go out of the country. It's just because of what I do, it's a necessity. And so I was going to buy the internet package no matter what. Unfortunately, Royal Caribbean offers two different internet tiers. One is just the, the internet without streaming. The other one is internet plus streaming. I made the mistake of buying the one without streaming on the Mariner of the Seas. Um, and then thankfully they upgraded me for free after I realized how terrible it was, but they will throttle it. It's not gonna work that well. So if you're gonna buy the internet package, it's a requirement to buy the higher tier or you're just, it's not gonna be reliable. And so ironically, when I was going to buy the higher internet tier for this cruise at the time period, it was about $18.99 per day. Um, but the key itself was about $21.99 per day. And so it was a couple dollars more. I'm like, I mean, I might as well with all these additional benefits. I kept hearing all these different bad reviews about how bad it is, it's such a ripoff and Royal Caribbean's nickel and dime. And you, uh, just what I have to say about that is folks, if you're going on a cruise ship, I mean, what do you expect? Like, I mean, you're getting all those type of services. Of course they're gonna charge you for it. So that was the least of my worries. I just didn't wanna buy something that didn't feel like I was actually gonna use. And the key ended up being literally one of, the favorite, one of my favorite parts of the trip. Um, so let me go ahead and just kind of throw the rating out there. If you're like me, where you're a solo cruiser, you have to buy the internet package and you don't mind just, like I said, paying a couple of dollars more and you want to actually have the best experience possible. There's so many other things I can mention, but I'm just going to put it out there. For my rating, this is definitely going to be a must do. Now there is a flip side to this. Um, this key may not be for everyone. So again, I just wanna give you all a quick reminder of those who may not be interested in this. Um, one, of course, if you're not interested in connecting to the internet, if you truly wanna go on a cruise to be on a vacation and say you're on vacation, if you're one of the people that don't really care about things like the flow rider, the ice skating, rock climbing, zip line and wall, if you can care less about getting to the shows early, if you just wanna actually just see the shows, not necessarily front row, um, again, if you're not really cared about, if you don't really care about room service, if you know, if you know you're going to do the buffet or a specialty dining or even the MDR or stuff like that, 
And then the main thing I want to say is, of course, if you're one of those higher tiers that I mentioned, someone the other party guests that's already on board, people like Diamond Plus, Pinnacle, if you're definitely in the star class, there really is no reason to do the key. I mean, yes, you have access to a couple other things that you may not have in those classes, but I mean, if you're already at that tier, there's really no reason to even consider those other things because you probably got other stuff that I don't even know about. Um, so again, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Like I said, this is just something I really wanted to mention because the key is in a lot of people's mind. Um, for example, my crew is, I think I pay a little bit under 170 after everything, including tax for the key. Like I said, it did include internet, the main thing I was concerned about, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so again, if you all enjoyed this video, please, if you don't mind, maybe share it with somebody. A lot of people are curious about this program, so share it with them. I do plan to get those links in the description so you can download the actual key documents um, once I find out how to do it. And then again, like I said, just subscribe for more videos. I'll see you soon. It's your boy, Mr. Bucketlist. Peace out.